Hey, so today I want to talk about uh, Lambda extensions. Particularly I want to talk about whether Lambda extensions is something that you want to pay attention to and I'm basically just going to run through the different use cases for Lambda extensions. Main use case for Lambda extensions is primarily for third parties and vendors to add functionality into Lambda uh, in a way that's simple and easy to use. However, that's not the only use case. There are other use cases. For instance, if you are a big company, probably the bigger company you are, the more functions you're running. If you want some standardization about things like monitoring, configuration and, and uh, security, when it comes to your Lambda functions, then Lambda extensions might be something that is gonna be interesting to you. However, if you're a software engineer, if you're just interested in Lambda functions, then uh, this might be interesting to you. But generally speaking, for those who are just using Lambda functions, Lambda extensions might be something that you don't just need to look into just yet. Okay, so to understand why Lambda extensions exist, let me take one use case and explain, for instance, within the context of monitoring. So in a server world, when it came to monitoring, a typical pattern that was used is you take an agent, load that onto your server or to your machine, and then that will be used to then feed off metrics to a third party platform or your monitoring platform. However, when it comes to AWS Lambda or to serverless, you can't do that as easily as you could do with an agent, it wasn't possible. So that's where AWS introduced Lambda extensions to try and make that process a bit easier. So the world before Lambda extensions in uh, for your AWS Lambda, if you wanted to add monitoring and metrics to that, you had two options. First option was uh, synchronous. So during your Lambda functions invocation, you could send off metrics synchronously through the actual lifetime of the Lambda. However, that would then possibly lead to a penalty on the end user. You're adding a bit of latency into your Lambda function, uh, which isn't desirable. The second option was asynchronous. So what you could do is drop some data into CloudWatch and then post-process that after the fact. So, but again, this is not optimal because uh, you're going to be using CloudWatch, additional resources, additional cost, and also there's gonna be a bit of a time lag with how long it takes for that metric to go into CloudWatch and then get fed off, processed, etc. So both of those options weren't great, which is why uh, Lambda Extensions was created to try and tackle this use case. A couple of different key points about Lambda Extensions is, for instance, you can have 10 extensions per Lambda function. You, your, the size of that extension counts towards your 250 megabyte limit for the Lambda function, so something to consider. Also, the Lambda function or the Lambda extension uses the same resources as your function, so CPU, network, those type of things, they are uh, considered within your Lambda function. So the extension contributes to those resource consumption. Lastly, in terms of cost for the for the Lambda extension is that's factored in with the cost of the Lambda function itself. There's no separate cost for the extension, but the extension will probably lead to additional sort of CPU or lifespan of the Lambda function itself, which in turn will increase costs slightly. But hopefully it should be a lot less than some of the, the different options for adding this type of behavior into a Lambda function. But that's it really. Uh, the main use cases for Lambda extensions. So in summary, basically the Lambda extensions are mainly aimed at vendors, think Datadog, New Relic, uh, even Vault for instance, so that it can provide their functionality inside of Lambda. It might also be useful to you if you are part of, for instance, a platform team or a central tooling team, uh, because you might want to leverage how the extension API works to provide sort of consistent monitoring or configuration uh, or some sort of security benefits across all of your different Lambda functions in your organization. So they're the primary use cases for it. That hopefully should give you an idea of what Lambda extensions is and hopefully answer the question of whether or not it's useful for you. And I will see you next time.